Now, the outgoing head of the United Nations mission in South Sudan insists that the peacekeeping mission is not finished, and she lamented the lack of peace in the country, which has been plagued, of course, by civil war since uh, the end of 2013. Uh, a fragile peace deal was signed in August of 2015, we reported on that, but it collapsed earlier this year and fighting has escalated in some regions between the uh, government and rebel forces in what is the world's newest country, South Sudan. Uh, according to the charity UNICEF, some 3.2 million children in South Sudan have been affected by the war, with more than 170,000 children treated for malnutrition this year alone. So the figures are pretty sobering. Well, last week, one of UNICEF's ambassadors, the actor Tom Hiddleston, made his second trip to South Sudan, where he met some of the affected children. And I'm very pleased to say that Tom is with us now. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Hugh. Thanks so if this is the second visit, I suppose I'll ask, first of all, why the second visit? What prompted that? Well, I felt very invested in the, in the fate of the country. Um, I went for the first time in February 2015. Um, we're making a film, I should say. We're making a documentary film about how the civil war has affected the lives of innocent children. Um, I do think it's interesting that it's the, the youngest nation in the world and people often don't know about it. Um, they, they wish me luck in Sudan and I say no no South Sudan and, and I think the, the cost of the civil war on children has been profound and deep and I, and I, I wanted to go back and see what had changed and, and meet people again who I'd met before. So that very point, what, what was the change that you noticed? The outbreak of fighting in July has, comp has changed the area of danger, essentially. When I went last year, the northern part of the country was where the hotspots were, was where the most dangerous uh, risks were for everybody. And because the fighting in, on the 7th of July broke out in the capital city of Juba, um, the entire central, eastern and western um, part of the country in the south near the border with Uganda is very, very dangerous mm -hmm. indeed, which actually affects their supply lines. Um, and that was interesting because we were staying in Juba and, and the, the curfews were, for us were at 6 p.m. and you couldn't go out and you could feel the edge. Um, How would you characterise, I mean, lo lots of viewers will be following the story about the conflict there. And yeah. They may not be as aware of the humanitarian challenge. How, how would you characterise the challenge that faces UNICEF? It's, it's a very well-resourced organisation. Yes. What's yeah. it managing to do? Well, the physical reality is when the, the, the major cities become battle zones, as we've seen in Aleppo. Mm. Um, and the, the same is true in South Sudan. When gunfire breaks out, everybody runs. And children often run in a different direction to their mother or their father. Mm. And from that moment, they're separated. And some parents give up their children for dead. And um, UNICEF have a tracing program which helps reunify children with their parents. There are right now over 14,000 children who are missing and unaccompanied and I, I've met some of these children and, and I met uh, two boys in um, a northern camp in a town called Bentiu who have, they're, they're 9 and 12. This isn't the camp that we're seeing here Tom, is it? Is this, are these the boys? That's right, those oh, two, great. yeah, Bom and Jarl. That was well timed. And <laughs> yeah. Not planned, but yeah. uh, they haven't seen their mother for three years. Um, and it's simply a case of when fighting broke out, they all ran in different directions. Right. Um, but UNICEF are working on the ground to help reunify these families and, and also provide emergency life-saving water, vaccines. Um, they create safe spaces for, for education to take place in the absence of schools. That's the problem because the, the cities are uninhabitable. So people run into the countryside where there's nothing. Mm. And the cost on um, the innocent people and children of the country is, uh, is extraordinary. Because understandably there's been such a sharp focus on Aleppo and on Syria, you've mentioned it yourself. Um, how much of a problem has it been trying to refocus, not, maybe not refocus, but get people to pay as much attention as is needed uh, in somewhere as, as badly hit as South Sudan? I think it's a forgotten country. Um, in many respects. I think it's a forgotten war and that's why I'm here today. I feel, yeah. I feel the duty to, to speak up for these children. It's a very, very dangerous place and um, we must, it mustn't get lost in, in the cycle of, of um, everything else that's going on. I think we have a duty to, uh, to, do, what, to do what we can. Um, just in terms of resourcing, yeah. When you think of an organisation as big as UNICEF, the fact that, of course, it's representing lots of multinational groups, mm. could it be better resourced? 
Is it a, when you, what was the evidence on the ground when you were there? Did you think, actually, this is a place which needs even more resourcing than it has at the moment? There's a huge funding gap, no question. They need more money um, uh, because there are so many people affected and they have limited resources. Um, it needs greater investment. It needs greater attention, I think, from um, governments who have the ability to help. Um, it simply needs to be higher on the agenda. Um, UNICEF is blessed with, with um, um, huge donations from all kinds of, of multinationals, from individual donors, but it does need more. And I, it, truthfully, when I see it on the ground, um, the impact is profound. And I wouldn't have been able to, to visit the places I... I'm under the protection of the UN. Yeah. Everybody trusts it, mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter who you are. If you see UNICEF, um, a flag or, or, or the name on the side of a, um, a jeep, People know that's where the water comes from, that's where the vaccines come from, that's where the educational um, equipment comes from, and they know that they're doing a huge amount of work with, with child soldiers. There's a terrible uh, figure, over 17,000 children have been forcibly recruited to serve in armed militia. What happens if they're separated is they run into the bush and yeah. um, the, a local militia will pick them up and, and they become soldiers for life. It becomes incredibly difficult. Would you consider a third visit then? The reason I'm asking that is because someone in your position, with your profile, which of course is why you're doing this, mm. um, will inevitably be asked to do other things and visit other countries and lend your name to other causes. Um, to what extent do you want to be associated with all the efforts in South Sudan, not to the exclusion of other things, but, yeah. but primarily? Well, I feel I, f I like to be rigorous um, and, and I think to speak um, with authority about something, you have to have some authenticity. And I've, having spent um, a, a cumulative two weeks on the ground there and seen lots of different parts of the country, I do feel like I can speak to you and I understand the complexity of the problem. Um, I've seen extraordinary despair and struggle, but I've also seen the joy of, of what happens when it works, when yeah, you see yeah. young boys and girls who are brought back to their families. And I've seen, you know, more tears of joy than, than than I've ever seen in my life. And that, I think, is what's compelling. That, that's what makes me think I, I have to come and talk about it. Well, I hope, Tom, that people are listening and that uh, that'll uh, boost the appeal. Um, it's good to have you with us. Thank you, and, sir. Uh, and if there's a third visit, hopefully you'll be back to talk to I'll us. I'll let you know, absolutely. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Thanks Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Tom.